Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. We are really excited to announce that the course that we launched a little while ago, 3D Rendered Data Sets with Blender for Beginners, is now going to be launched for free on YouTube. So you will be able to watch all of the videos for free on YouTube. And then if you want the downloadable content for the course, you just have to support us on Patreon. And we want to thank those of you who are already Patreon subscribers. It means so much to us that you have chosen to give us a few dollars to support our work. So we're going to launch this over the course of multiple parts. So keep an eye out for the playlist and any downloadable content links or links to other resources or whatever else you might need. Those will be in the video description. We hope you enjoy. In this video, we're going to talk about the transfer learning classifier Jupyter Notebook. So go ahead and make sure that's open in Jupyter Notebook. And I'm just going to read what I described here rather than trying to ad lib it. So what is in this notebook? In this notebook, we will train a neural network to classify the images in our synthetic data set. It should be able to load an image and determine whether it contains an A, B, or C. Special note, this is different from an object detector, which can find multiple objects in a single image and put them in bounding boxes. A classifier only gives one label for the entire image. We could create a simple convolutional neural network from scratch, but in practice, it is much more common to start with a pre-trained neural network and retrain it to work with a new dataset. In order to do this retraining, called transfer learning, we will start with a model on TensorFlow Hub that has been trained on the ImageNet dataset. We will then add a couple layers to the end of the network and train it. So this notebook is uh, it's inspired by this uh, transfer learning with TensorFlow Hub tutorial. If you're not familiar with TensorFlow Hub, it is basically a collection of pre-trained neural networks that you can use and retrain them on your own stuff if you want or use them as is. So the first thing that we're going to do here is just make sure that we have everything set up. So we need to make sure that TensorFlow is installed and TensorFlow Hub. And we can actually do that pip install here if you don't already have it done. And the thing I wanted to point out here is there's actually two options for TensorFlow or TensorFlow GPU. So if you have a CUDA GPU and you want to take advantage of it, I do. Uh, what you want to do is uncomment this line and comment out this line. And then you can hit Shift Enter to run this cell. And it may already be satisfied if you've already installed it. Mine already is because I've already installed it. Uh, and then, as long as there's no errors, you should be able to continue and shift enter on this next line. So that's all I wanted to do for this first video on this notebook. Uh, make sure you get all of this working. If you have any issues, uh, make sure to ask questions. Or actually, before you ask the question, go ahead and look up, uh, see if you can figure out what the error is, because it, I might not be able to get to that answer as quickly as you can find it on Google. So. Once you have everything installed and everything seems to be running without errors, then we will pick back up in the next video with filling in our code. In this video, we're going to start filling in some code in this notebook. I didn't think it would be worth the time to try and follow along and code every single piece of code that is necessary here. Some of it is very much, you know, repetitive in terms of you don't need to code all the imports with me, and there will be some things like displaying sample images. That's common across most uh, projects like this, and so for us to spend a bunch of time at, on it would probably be a waste of your time. Let's get started filling in some code. And I'll make my text a little bit bigger, so hopefully you can see it a little easier. So right here, we're going to say image shape equals, and then in parentheses, 224, 224. This is the image size that we rendered from Blender, and it's the size that we're going to feed into the neural network. Then we need to specify the training directory, the validation directory, and the test directory. So these are the directories that we rendered out to from Blender. So right here, I have my C colon slash temp slash ABC test, and then train. 
Now, I just wanna show you something really quick. If I were to copy this in Windows, this probably doesn't happen on any other platform, but do quotes and then paste this in here. You have to be aware on Windows that when it uses backslashes, those need to either be double backslashes to escape them from the string like this, or you can just do forward slashes, which is tends to be my preference in Python, and then that will work fine. The forward slashes work well on Linux and Mac as well. So this points to our training directory, and now I'm going to just copy this to make it a little bit easier on myself and paste this here and here and just swap out this for val and test. So whatever your path is, wherever you rendered your data set that has all these different letters in it, the training, test, and validation directories, just make sure that that lines up here so that that's what gets loaded. Next, we're gonna fill in some code that's going to make a generator for these images. And basically that's used, it's something that's built into TensorFlow. Uh, we're gonna be using this image data generator module here from the TensorFlow Keras preprocessing image. And that's going to help us just load images from our directory and then use those to train our neural network later. So type image data generator, and then in parentheses, rescale equals one dot slash 255. Then on the next line, we're going to do train underscore image underscore generator. So that's just this right here that we just created dot flow underscore from underscore directory. And then in parentheses, we're going to specify the directory equals train underscore dir comma shuffle equals true. So we've specified the directory, that's pretty obvious. Shuffle is going to shuffle images so that they don't always show up in the same order when they're loaded from this generator, comma target underscore size equals, and then we wanna pass in this image shape right here. And just to make it easier, I'm going to copy and paste this in here. So we're passing in the size of the images. Now we wanna do this for the validation and the test image generators. And this line is identical, so we can just copy and paste this here and here. And then we need to get the generators for each of them. So let's not copy this line here. We need the validation one. So we'll copy this and this, oops. Did I do that right? Yes. And then we need to flow from directory. So we can copy all the way up to probably here. Paste both of those. And then we need to pass in the validation dir and the test dir. And then the rest of the line is the same too. So we can just copy this after, or the comma all the way to the end, copy it, and then paste this here and paste this here. So now we should have three different image generators ready to go. So let's start on this one. If you click here on the, on the left, you can select this cell and then do shift enter, shift enter again. And here it says found 900 images belonging to three classes. So the three classes are A, B, and C. The 900 images are 300 images of each class. Then we'll do our validation. So we have 240, and that's because three times 80 images of each is 240. And finally, we'll get 30 test images. Now that we have our three generators, we can use this pre-filled out display samples code, which uses matplotlib to display a few samples from each of these. You can see here, it's calling this display samples function right here that was just defined right here on the train data gen, validation data gen, and the test data gen. So select this cell, hit shift enter, and we'll see some samples from our directory. So these are sample training images. Here's some sample validation images and sample test images. This is a good way to just make sure that your generators are set up properly and 
just see a few examples and make sure that things seem to be hooked up properly. In this video, we're going to work on creating the TensorFlow model. So as I say here, now we're going to create a new TensorFlow model based on this ImageNet MobileNet V2 100 224 feature vector. So this is a pre-trained model. It has never seen these 3D letters before, so we're retraining it. As far as I know, there's no 3D letters that are inside of the ImageNet image data set. So if I'm wrong on that, then I apologize. But it does seem like that data set is more like real world images, like cars and trees and birds and things like that. If you're curious about where this came from, this is the source. You can go look at it. It's not really much to look at, except there's some more description about what it is. But let's move on to the code. So first of all, we need a number of classes. And we know that this is three. But just so that this is automated, and in case you end up using a data set that has more than three in the future, we won't need to modify this code. So we will say len of train underscore data underscore gen dot class underscore indices. So what this is is a list of the different classes in index form that were in the training data set. So this tells us how many classes we have. And then we can create our model. Now this model is gonna be very simple because we are using this pre-trained model as a base. So all we have to do is type in tf.keras dot with a capital S sequential. And then you need a parenthesis and a square bracket. And then go ahead and make some space here. We're going to add hub dot keras, keras layer. So make sure you capitalize that correctly. And then in parentheses, we need to put our link. So the link here, I think I can just copy and paste this. Let me just double check that it's the same as my notes here. I do believe this to be the same. So we can copy this in here and paste it. And then after this quote, but before that closing parenthesis, you can put a comma. And then on the next line, we're going to say trainable equals false. And what this means is we're not going to retrain this part of the network. This is already trained. We're just going to sort of adapt it so that we're using just the very end of it to do our classifications. It is also possible that you can fine tune this neural network, which means that if you set this to trainable, then you can sort of take the existing layers and retrain them on your new data set. I experimented with that and all it did was it just took way longer and it seemed to be getting worse results. So I didn't even keep going down that path. So we're just gonna keep this trainable as false. And then input underscore shape equals, and then we're going to pass in image shape. So this is our variable from above. And then we want to add on three comma and parentheses. So what this does basically is our image shape is 224 comma 224. We're adding on a new tuple, which is three. And just to show you what that's going to look like, the result is basically 224 comma 224 comma three. Okay, so that's that's all this is saying. Just add on a three. And what is that three for? That is because the image has a red, a green, and a blue channel to it. So it has three channels of 224 pixels by 224 pixels. So I don't need to keep that there. And then after this parenthesis, we're going to add a next layer. So basically this is one layer. This is the first thing in this list. This square bracket indicates that we're creating a list. So this is now the second element of the list. And this second element is tf.keras.layers, oops, lowercase, layers.dense with a capital D. num underscore classes. So that's what we're going to pass in for the first parameter. And then activation equals soft max. 
Okay, so now we have these two layers, but in reality, this Keras layer here is actually a lot of layers. Um, and then the uh, dense layer at the end basically says, all right, put on a simple layer in Keras that has three classes in our case, and we'll have an activation of softmax on it, which if you're not super familiar with how deep learning works, don't worry too much about this. Um, you should take another class probably if you really wanna understand all of these different terms, but to get it working um, for practical purposes, you don't really need to know this. You just need to copy an example that works. So once we have this, we can hit shift enter and it should build our model and what it did was it downloaded this from the TensorFlow Hub uh, website. It added on our three neurons basically here. And now we have this thing that says total parameters is this right here. So there's a lot here. That's why if you were to set this to trainable and you trained all 2.2 million or 2.3 million parameters, it would take a long time. But we're only training the very end where it takes all of its outputs from this thing called the feature vector and then converts it into whether it's an A, a B, or a C. Next, we need to add something that is the model.compile. So we have a model, but it's not compiled yet. So go ahead and remove this par portion right here. And I'm just gonna make space here on a new line and we're gonna set optimizer equals tf.keras.optimizers.atom. And it's just a coincidence that my name is the same as the optimizer. I did not create this, I promise. The next one is loss equals tf.keras.losses.categorical cross entropy from underscore logits equals true. Okay, so this is basically a loss function. And a loss function is sort of like, it makes a prediction, it knows the right answer, right? We It makes a prediction on an image, let's say we pass in uh, an image of B, and it makes a prediction, and it says, I think it's A. Then this function is basically going to calculate how wrong it was. So that's what the loss function is, and that's why it needs to be categorical cross entropy instead of something else, because we have different categories. And then the final one is metrics equals, and then in square brackets, and then in uh, quotes, ACC for accuracy. And we can hit shift enter, and now we have a compiled model. In this video, we're going to build the code that will train our neural network. So the first thing we need right here is the train steps per epoch. So basically there's sort of a division of how models are trained. So a neural network model is trained on a data set, you know that. It tends to go through that data set more than once. And every time it goes through that data set, it's called an epoch. I've also heard it pronounced other ways, but that's the way that I think it should be pronounced. So basically we're gonna run through this more than once. We're gonna run through it four times and we need to calculate how many steps it should go through per epoch. So to do that, we're gonna say NP, so we're gonna use the NumPy library, dot seal for sealing. And we're gonna pass in train underscore data underscore gen dot samples divided by train underscore data underscore gen dot batch underscore size. And what this is doing is it's asking how many different samples, how many different examples are there of these images in this data set? So in our case, it's three, or sorry, it's 900. And we're dividing that by the batch size, which I think defaults to 32. So we do that division, and because that's not a whole number, we basically round it up to the nearest whole number. And that's what this train steps per epoch is. And then we need the same thing. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this to save a little bit of typing. And I'm gonna change this to 
validation and validation. So now we've got these calculated values. We're going to say we're just going to do four epochs here, and then we need to fill in this model.fit. We have some parameters to put in here. So the first one we're going to pass in is train underscore data underscore gen. So we're passing in our first data or the training data set generator. The next one is epochs, and we're going to set that equal to epochs. So we're just passing in this value right here. Then we need steps per epoch. And we're going to set this to train steps per epoch. So we're going to pass this right here at a comma. And then on the next line, we're going to do validation underscore data. So it's I think it's possible to train without passing in a validation data set, but does work better when you use validation data. So we're going to pass this in. And this is going to be validation underscore data underscore gen. And then we also need to pass in validation underscore steps. And this is basically the same value as this for validation. So we need to pass in this value. OK, so once you have this, Go ahead and save it just for good measure. And it does auto save, but just, just to be extra safe, you can save it. And then we're gonna run training here. I'm gonna hit shift enter. And you'll see that it's starting on the first epoch and it's beginning to train. And we can see here the loss and the accuracy. So the one that I pay the most attention to generally is the accuracy and then the val accuracy. So the accuracy is how accurate it was at guessing the correct label on the uh, training images. And then the val accuracy is how good it was on the validation set. So basically, it doesn't see the validation set. It sees the training images, and then it uses the validation images to test how good am I at guessing these labels. And you can see this actually finished already. And so we've got an accuracy on the training data set of about 95%. So that's really good. 95% of the time, it's getting it correct. And then we have a validation accuracy. It's kind of cut off here, but it's 93%, which is really good, meaning that on the validation set of images, which it's not being trained on, it's finding out that it is... Uh, getting or it's testing itself on that and it's getting 93%. So that's pretty great. Very impressive. Uh, you could keep training this and you could try and go longer. But in my experimentations, at least as this network is written right now, I haven't really been able to get above about a 93%. Sometimes it'll say it's 94 or 95%. But, um, you know, that's just kind of, I think that's just numerical rounding errors, so to speak that it's not actually getting that much better at detecting. So feel free to try and experiment if you want to do more epochs or if you want to try and add more data, uh, you know, more renders to see if you can get this higher, you're welcome to do so. But that's where we're going to leave it for now because 93% is pretty darn good. In this video, we're going to work on inference. And so that is where we take our trained model and run some test images through it that it has never seen before and see how well it performs. So we're going to start off, we need a list, uh, sort of a lookup NumPy array of class names. And I wish there was a little bit simpler way to do this, but fortunately it's only a couple lines of code. So the first thing we'll do is create an empty NumPy array, np.empty. And then in parentheses, we're going to create a list. And so this is just going to be a list here of length. So in square brackets and then the function len, which will get the length of test underscore data underscore gen dot class indices. So this gets a, this just creates an empty NumPy array of length three in our case put a comma and then dtype equals object, order equals, and then in uh, quotes here, C. 
object. I initially did string here thinking that this was going to be the right thing, but apparently if you do string, it doesn't work properly. So object seems to work just, just fine for having strings inside of it. So then we need to say for key comma val. So the, we're going to get the key and value out of a dictionary in test underscore data underscore gen dot class indices dot items. So basically this class indices is a list of names and then the index of it. So it's going to look something like it'll be like a colon zero comma b colon one. Well, I kind of messed that up, but I think you get the idea. So we're going to have to look up what the name is and put it into each slot in this NumPy array so that we can quickly look it up. So all we have to do is class underscore names of val, which is the index, equals key. So that's the name. So this will be a list that says ABC or a NumPy array that's ABC. Next, we need to... Uh, get a test batch of images and labels. And to do that, it's quite simple. You just say next test data gen. So what this will do is, because this is an iterator, this will just grab the next batch when you call this. Now there's a little gotcha, and we're going to do this first, test underscore data underscore gen dot reset. And the reason we're doing this is because if you were to, for example, try retraining this, uh, maybe you wanted to try more epochs, or maybe you had a, you'd updated your data set or something, and you came back here. Then, if you didn't update your test data, data gen data set, the iterator would still be at the end of where it just had grabbed. So, let's say it grabbed a batch of 32 images, and now you're calling next again, there might not be any more images left. So you can call this reset, which will reset the iterator to the beginning so that when you call next, it'll still get that first batch of images. Now we just need to call the prediction code. So the predicted batch is basically send our images through the neural network. And to do that, it's model.predict. And then you want to predict the image batch. So it will call predict on every single image that's in this array. And then we can get the predicted ID by saying np.argmax of predicted batch comma axis equals negative one. So what this does is it gets the highest value in the prediction. So basically it's got a it knows that there are three different classes here, in our case, A, B, and C, and it's going to make a percentage prediction of which one it thinks it is. So it might be only 60% sure that this is A, but as long as 60% is the highest prediction, then it's going to use that. So in the case where it was like 30% sure of each one, but slightly more sure of another one, this is going to find the highest value of those predictions. Then we're going to say class underscore names of predicted ID. That's the label of these. So this is the predicted label converted into A, B, or C instead of just an index 0, 1, or 2. And then the label ID is np.argmax label underscore batch comma axis equals negative 1. And what this means is basically the label batch that we got from this test, gen test data gen examples, it also puts it in this array format, except it's 100% positive of its correct label. So we still need to do the same thing here. So then we can just do shift enter. The predictions were pretty quick. And now we can show the predictions. And these are the predictions. And it got, it looks like every single one of them correct, except for this one. It thought this was A, but it's, it looks like maybe it's a B just based on that shadow. So that's pretty incredible that it worked as well as it did and as quickly as it did. Obviously, these images are small and, and it's a small data set, but 
um, I think this is just quite impressive that we can, you know, do this example and see such incredible results in such a short amount of time.